Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of The Negro and the Law, a reply part 7. And this very important notice, this video is made with the best intentions and not to offend anyone. It is neither a propaganda video nor an entertainment video. It is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines, referenced and study them yourself. Remember, the American Anti-Slavery Society, which whatever it may have been up to this time, is certainly now in the hands of the non-resistance, and does certainly now take its tone from them, calls upon us to agitate, agitate, for the separation of the northern from the southern states, G. Smith, 1844, and this is from the book Constitutional Argument Against American Slavery, published 1844. And from William H. Holcomb in 1867, free Negroes everywhere will ultimately die out in the presence of white civilization. The British Civilization Society will depopulate Africa instead of enlightening it. The safety of the Negro lies, first of all, in his wise and humane subordination in some form to the white race. And this is from the book, Suggestions as to the Spiritual Philosophy of African Slavery, published 1867. And still on the question 5, which you must understand is designed to make sure that the slaves do not agitate for freedom. You don't need to believe us, for example, when we mention to you that all this lockdown, COVID, whatever you may choose to call them, are all targeted at Biafra and Ambazonia. And ultimately, all they are looking for now is how to justify their vaccines. Remember, it's one thing for you to believe that they have the best intentions for you. And another thing for you to remember that there is no guarantee that what they demonstrate as the vaccine they have given to themselves is the same they will ship to sub-saharan africa bear that in mind they can come out on tv and say look we are taking the vaccine that's a lie the golden calf coded and so to the question five it says with all the followers he has and thousands of dollars in donations he has accumulated over the years why does he not try to build Igbo land from within? Remember, this individual is a descendant of the slave hunters. You notice that he believes building a school that children will go to on empty stomach is what development is all about. He is talking about thousands of dollars because the slave master is a subtle beast. His slave hunting partners are always interested in the money. Remember, they control the money. You will see that they have changed how diaspora remittances are going to be handled. It didn't go through the National Assembly. The CBN just gave the other because they control that CBN. And they do that through their slave hunting partners. That is the British, the Europeans, the Arabs, and of course, their slave hunting partners in what is Nigeria today. We are telling you all this so that you see where they are going. It doesn't matter where they started. They could have started from a lockdown. They could have started from China and a, a Wuhan, China and all that. But let's see where they are going to. And it goes further to say, at least if Nam the Kano slash IPOB, IPOB stands for Indigenous People of Biafra, create projects to build either a school, a hospital, support agriculture, or you know, anything at least, would that be so bad? Instead of sending the youths to their early death by fueling an unnecessary agitation. Remember also that during the slave trade, it was against the law for a slave to agitate to be free. It was also against the law for the press to condemn the slave trade. So we ask you again, why do you think when people contact the European Parliament, the American houses of whatever, the lawmakers about killings in sub-Saharan Africa, they pretend not to hear. Think about it. If you have ever written your MPs about Biafra and Ambazonia and you didn't get any reply, ask yourself why. And so, permit us to ask, have you ever seen a man invite a lady or a girl to visit him and she asks, why do you want me to visit you? And please remember that this may not apply or well understood by the diaspora. We're talking about people in the context of Nigeria and southern Nigeria to be precise. And so, does the man ever reveal his true intentions for inviting the lady? 
have you ever seen the man tell the lady that yes i want to sleep with you that's why i want you to come to the house even when that may be his ultimate intention but again note the use of may but our interest is for you to understand what we're saying here and likewise when you see people ready to die over one nigeria or one cameroon ideally the slave master's interest do you sit back to ask yourself why they will be doing that your experience do you live in the diaspora say europe the americas north africa etc and you observe that your children are singled out for unfair treatment be it by the teachers be it anywhere else be it amongst other children and committee of other gatherings of children of different races and ethnicities and colors do you know why or have you wondered why they do that because they know where your child is from and the circumstances around him or her remember it is where a useless army that was a slave hunting militia would take weapons from the countries where the child is now suffering in the hands of those hosting him or her to be killing supposedly their own siblings meanwhile they bought those weapons remember they buy those weapons at a very exorbitant rate so because of their lack of humanity and common sense the armies you see there kill their own people so when the media carries it it becomes justifiable to think that people from there are anything but human even when the victims of that man's inhumanity to man are different from those that are carrying it out and so somehow they think they are doing your child a favor by allowing him or her come to their place remember your own place is in turmoil look at sub-saharan africa look at the schools look at the roads they don't get built but then the slave hunters will always have enough money to buy weapons from the slave masters because they were the slave hunting partners and like we quoted at the beginning you saw the book of where they are headed to that negroes will ultimately disappear and in nigeria for example do you not wonder why when people agitate for roads to be built or amenities to be provided they either arrest or kill the agitator or even pay them instead of doing those things have you wondered why they can afford to pay any amount instead of doing those things have you ever sat back to think about why they do that we shall ultimately tell you perhaps not in this video and when you see northern muslims in nigeria for example going to mecca on their annual hajj we know the federal government subsidizes it from public funds do you also not wonder where they make the money from and also in west and central africa do you not wonder why they always fight against things like independence of one part or another and self-determination remember the weapons are always made and provided by the slave master and all the instruments of war everything they need for the war is also provided by the slave master remember like we told you believe it or not those in the army there they lack humanity they lack common sense because they were the slave hunters and they are conditioned along the same lines by the slave master who provides the training if you go and check all the people who were in the nigerian army who fought to defend nigeria laid down their lives to defend nigeria created by the slave masters you will see that most of them were trained in the uk and please forgive our use of the term trained they were actually conditioned to see the negroes as their prey that's ideally what it is that's why you would see one man could wake up one day and feed a portion of nigeria to cameroon nobody goes to war the press did not even write to, to condemn it so some people who were nigerians the day before became cameroonians the day after due to one man who was a former army of course the army were the slave hunters but then the same people will be ready to kill you just for saying you want freedom saying we didn't say you did anything just for saying it only saying and so in the social media for example facebook do you notice how the slave master takes sides with their slave hunting partners who are the oppressors against the negroes do you also not wonder why things like youtube react against biafra or ambazonia and in support of things like one nigeria or one cameroon and so do you take time to understudy what their interests could be 
From the questions 5 we are responding to, what about the government doing those things it promised? We mean those things the person that asked the questions were saying IPOB should be doing instead of agitating. Why does the same person not ask the government why they cannot do those things when they collect taxes, they collect all revenues, they collect diaspora remittances, they collect every money collectible and leave the people hungry and dry. But yet, he now wants those asking for freedom to lie low, to remain slaves, while the government keeps feeding fat because the slave hunters are in power there. Believe it or not, if you research it, you will see it. You don't need to believe us. Their interests. Have you ever imagined how the Negroes got enslaved and remained in bondage? Remember, it's one thing to capture a man, let's say, taking a man hostage or kidnapping a man and then being able to keep the same man in your house, he doesn't kill you and he keeps doing whatever you want the way you want it. And have you tried to identify those behind Negro slavery beyond what you were told in school or in class by the slave masters through his uh, curriculum? And also, when you see pastors against Biafra, do you wonder why they are doing it or why they would be against Biafra? or perhaps against their own people looking for freedom. Remember, what they are doing was what the slave master did in the past. The same way they are making money from the people today is the same way the slave master did it in the past. Everyone knows one thing about the Negro. He is very religious. And likewise, when you post about Biafra and Ambazonia, and you observe that Facebook censors and controls your posts, do you not wonder what their interest is? Remember, it's very easy to say it is Nigerians working there. Remember to ask whether there are no pro-freedom people working there, ideally those who will support the freedom of their own people or even oppressed people, whoever they may be, working there. It's likely the official policy of the company. It's not an individual thing because they do it even in other countries. Like we asked at the beginning, if you have ever written your MP about their friend and Pazonia, and they never reply to you, that should tell you because that was exactly the same thing they did in the 1967-70 to 70 Biafra war with Nigeria which was a genocide supported and facilitated by the slave master, mainly the British. Remember, it was the same way they did the slave trade. And when you also see YouTube demonetize your content over Biafra and Ambazonia, for example, and you wonder what is their interest? What about seeing the so-called Great Britain against Biafra and Ambazonia? Do you wonder what is their interest and the origin of what they are doing today? Remember, it's very easy to dismiss COVID, dismiss whatever they are doing without looking at the historical records and see how the virus left China and is playing its role around the slave hunters of old. Check the countries that were involved in the slave trade. You will see that they are all part of the group aspiring and trying to enforce the vaccine. The structure of slavery today. During the slave trade proper, the Negroes were usually used against themselves, which is the same technique. You see the slave master and his slave hunting partners deploy against the Negroes, be it in Biafra or Ambazonia today. Religion was deployed as coded in Matthew 10, 34 to 36. Then, the slaves were divided into the favored and unfavored ones, the house slave and field slaves, which is the code of Esau and Jacob, and also the code of Ken and Abel. And so, ideally, the house slaves were then used against the field slaves, that is, the favored slaves were used against the field slaves, which you can see very easily if you looked at the Nigerian political terrain. You see how the so-called central bank changed how you can send money from the diaspora all in a bid to see how they can stop funding for the Biafra agitation. That's all you see them doing. Like we told you, all you need to understand who these people are is to study the historical records. So they have planned it with the slave master. They will close the border. At some point, they will close and shut down the internet. Remember, these people worked together in the past. They are still working together today. That was exactly what they did during the war of 1967-70. to 70. And as you can also see, they are imposing another lockdown on the people. And please remember, this is all in a bid to 
justify the vaccine such that when they present it, anyone who has suffered from these lockdowns, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, will be against anybody who opposes it. Remember, they will say, if the vaccine is what will free us from these frequent lockdowns, let's just have them. But as we always tell you, if you want to understand what may be going on, look at their slave hunting partners, look at the rules, look at the new laws being enforced in Nigeria, you will understand what we're saying. Remember, things like the Senate, those things are useless. They are just mere golden calves. They are not the real thing. That's what is coded in the biblical golden calf story. Remember, it's the same way you have an army that does not attack a particular group. A lot of indigenous groups have been expelled from their ancestral homes for the slave hunters, mainly the Fulanese, to occupy, and they are now in internally displaced people's camps. We want you to ask yourself, how come the same army they tell you that is protecting the territorial integrity of whatever nonsense they call the area in question does not attack the invaders? You will see the supposed president of the country telling people that those killing Nigerians were coming from Libya, were coming from all over the country. Meanwhile, they have the borders closed. Meanwhile, they have some so-called visa requirements. If you were traveling to a place like Nigeria today, you will see how difficult it is. But they still want you to believe that those coming in to kill people were coming from elsewhere, the Negro and the law. And have you ever listened to some of the descendants of the slave hunters over the formation of the Eastern Security Network? And you hear some of them tell you that it's against the law. No law approves this formation and all that. But they will never tell you which laws approved the formation of Amoteku, Hizba, Nietiala, Boko Haram, and all those terror groups you have in the north, controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. Remember, they need the weapons to wage the wars. So the slave master provides them with the weapons. Same way he did when they were his slave hunting partners. And for the records, if you are a so-called African-American or any Negro for that matter that still believes that one man could have sold another, remember those people you claim that were sold are just like you today. Now tell us how somebody could have walked into your house where you are with your family, your wife and your kids, perhaps two wives or even three wives, and they come in and you agree to sell yourself to them. They tell you it could have been the kings. The kings walk in and tell you that. There is no way they could have done that without an army. And if you look at how difficult it is to rule or lead the so-called Igbos, for example, today, or the Biafrans, to be more elaborate, that should tell you that it couldn't have been a cell. It required military force, which was what the armies are for. There were no armies in Negro land before the Europeans, the Moors, the Arabs, the Fulanese invaded the area. So you have to understand it. So if you can believe that somebody sold another, we want you to tell us in the comment section how somebody can sell you today. So somebody walks in and just sell you and just say, follow us, you follow them. It's impossible. It was done with the army. So if you just spend a little time, just about an hour is enough and research how the slaves were acquired, how they were sold, how they were shipped and who was behind the capture, the hunt, the raid. You will see what those armies are for. At least, if you see how they are used today, the army, some of them cannot afford three square meals in sub-Saharan Africa. The politicians have their children schooling abroad. But if you say freedom, or if you say something be done right, it is the army that the politicians will send to come and kill you, even at the risk of their own lives, just to tell you how senseless they are. But then, in order to enslave the Negroes, the slave master understood that he needed to use the law. Now, how does he use the law? This is coded in Exodus 32, 19. Remember, like we always tell you, believe it or not, the most high creator of heaven and earth is a spirit and never inspired or wrote any book. And even if it could have inspired or wrote any book, it is none of these books that the slave masters provided to you today. And so, the use of the law for slavery is coded in Exodus 32.19 where Moses allegedly broke the commandment tablets. Please remember that when you look at that incident, remember that there was no law prior to his bringing those commandments. So there is no way he could have been so angry with them seeing a golden calf and he now breaks a tablet in anger. 
as though he knew what they were doing. Look at the story again very well. And so let us reference select parts of the Holy Bible for the use of the Negro slaves in the British West India Islands and this was published 1807 and please note that this is British West India Islands and as you would expect the Exodus ended in chapter 20 and there is no chapter 32 19 that we were looking for and so we reference the Bible translated according to the Hebrew and Greek and conferred with the best translations in diverse languages and this was published in 1606 and here we are told that now as soon as he came near unto the host he saw the calf and the dancing so Moses wrath waxed hot and he cast the pebbles out of his hands and break them in pieces beneath the mountain so it is very easy to see that there is no way somebody seeing people with a calf or something will interpret that as if they were worshipping that calf. And above all, there were no laws, supposedly, prior to his going to get these laws from wherever. So the question becomes, what is the significance of that code to the slave master and his slave hunting partners? It simply tells them to always break the law. And so ideally, they make the law, you will be adhering to it, but the law does not apply to them. They keep breaking it. Otherwise, if you looked at it, the slave trade was legal. The laws upheld it. But were Negroes part of the lawmaking process? The answer would be no. This is the same thing you see happening in Sub-Saharan Africa today. The laws are made by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. They now impose it on the people. So when things happen, you will think it's the people doing it to themselves. You won't know that it is the slave master and his slave hunting partners subjugating and enslaving the same Negroes they have been subjugating and enslaving since whenever. And so to better understand this, let us reference a key to Uncle Tom's cabin, facts and documents upon which the story is founded. And this is by Harriet Beach Stowe and published 1868. And here we are told that if any person whatsoever shall willfully kill his slave or the slave of another person, the third person being convicted thereof shall be tried and condemned agreeable to the laws. Remember, it doesn't say what the punishment is. Agreeable to the laws. Who made those laws? And it goes further to say, and because Negro testimony is inadmissible in the courts of the state, and therefore the evidence of such crimes might be with difficulty supplied it is further provided that if any slave be mutilated beaten or ill-treated contrary to the true intent and meaning of this act when no one shall be present in such case the owner or other person having the management of said slave thus mutilated shall be deemed responsible and guilty of the said offense and shall be prosecuted without further evidence unless the said owner or other person so as aforesaid can prove the contrary by means of good and sufficient evidence or can clear himself by his own oath which said oath every court under the cognizance of which such offense shall have been examined and tried is by this act authorized to administer however our interest is where it says and because negro testimony is inadmissible in the courts of the state and therefore the evidence of such crimes might be with difficulty supplied it is further provided that so now somebody made the law to say the evidence of the negroes are inadmissible if you were to look at a place like nigeria for example they just need to accuse you the slave hunters will mean, and then there is nothing you can do. They go to the courts and command the judge to say this is what they want him to say. That's all. The same thing, but tinkered a bit. We are by this challenging you to show us how many Fulanese are in Nigerian prisons. Show us how many Fulanese in the history of Nigeria have been shot by firing squad for stealing or armed robbery or whatever you choose to call it. The same way you see them doing in the south. Just do that little check. 
put it in the comment section that this is what you found and that will further help us understand why some people are willing to fight and die for one nigeria especially the foolish ones in the army remember like we always tell you believe it or not the army we are the slave hunters the same way they were used to capture and sell people as slaves that's the same thing they are doing today let us also reference speeches in parliament respecting the abolition of the african slave trade great britain parliament 1789 and here we are told that but before we do look at the very interesting quote in front of the document it says man is to man the surest deadliest foe young and it says here hence during the last session of parliament nothing more could be accomplished than a law note a law remember moses broke the law it is a code that tells them to always break the law and they also make those laws you won't have an impute in it the negroes won't have an impute in it fixing the number of negroes to be taken aboard each slave ship of a given burden and thereby affording some mitigation to the sufferings of the wretched passengers so you see what we're talking about now what you're trying to tell us is that they will make a law in england to tell us in west africa to stop being foolish by capturing and selling our siblings to them if that makes sense to you if you can see the relationship between these things and what is happening today in biafra and in Amazonia, then there's no point watching our videos you will see that they have to debate the killing by the army whether at lake Togate or anywhere else in the british parliament whereas we have something called a senate there which is useless remember those are hand-picked lackeys and so the senate is controlled they don't make any useful laws if you doubt us conduct your research you see that they just go there to make their money they are typically the house slaves the favored slaves so when you talk anything like freedom they will be used against those suffering under the yoke of one nigeria but ideally we ask you again so you believe that they will make a law in the uk to tell us to stop capturing and selling ourselves in western central africa and then we still consider ourselves human if that does not make sense to you you will see that what clearly happens is that they make the law to stop what they were doing that's all there is no way people who were not speaking english were not doing business directly with them could have been the ones capturing themselves and selling themselves to them without a war it was done by that army that's why you see today too as people are suffering in nigeria asking for freedom it is the army that is killing their own people to force them to remain slaves you understand how it plays out it is the same thing same scenario but tweaked a bit and to better understand it you see that the british parliament is talking about the lake togate shooting whether real or imagined but you notice that nobody's talking about the massacre in obibo but they also know that that happened they have been written they understand it but they won't talk about it because their slave hunting partners are on the march with their jihad going to conquer the south that's all they are doing so you understand it so when you see them freeze diaspora remittances freeze selling of cell phones and anything in nigeria talking about national insurance numbers that's all they are working on to see how they can get all the information they need against those agitating for biafra ask yourself if they were the same people why are they not talking about negotiations why are they not talking about what is the problem what can we do to live together in peace that's because they have been conditioned to believe that the negroes are their slaves so if you say you are not happy with anything you become a bad slave you deserve to be killed so they will send the army who were the slave hunters at that time and in the event you don't understand the in-depth part of what is going on remember there was a rumor or some news about pan-africanists who intend to help liberate those areas having understood how the slave trade happened that may be why you see the slave master pulling out of the eu and you see the likes of the aboriginal narratives springing up they are sponsored so they need to find a way to persuade those in the diaspora to see themselves as not related to those back in africa because they understand that if those in the diaspora know this they will be eager to fight on the side of their siblings you may also remember that a few months before 
Martin Luther King was assassinated, he planned to visit Biafra. So our question to you is, if he didn't know the relationship between himself and that area, why wasn't he visiting Nigeria? And going further here, it tells us that of the mortality attached to this horrid traffic, what must be thought when we find it stated as the opinion of their own witnesses, corroborated by their own accounts of 35 voyages, mentioned in the evidence that the average during the middle passage only amounts to 6%. Remember, Den Calloway, who will tell you to 99% accuracy is working for the slave master, told you that middle passage was found in 18-somethings, whereas this book was published in 1780s. This is a British Parliament thing, so you don't think there is anything you can't investigate yourself. But the slave master understands that the Negroes do not read. They would rather listen to what any master is saying. So all he does is he gets somebody that looks like the Negro, and that is simply the devil speaking through the serpent code. So you see, he will be telling you as if you are one with him, but then everything he's saying has to be a lie. Ask yourself why an adult will, let's say, a girl or a lady was raped and she was either raped in a train station or at the airport for example and then the argument is where she was raped instead of the fact that she was raped at all that's ideally what the aboriginal narrative is playing at you see then telling you that you were enslaved here we are aborigines here why can't he explain to us what happened to the Negroes in Europe? They were also aborigines there. In the middle is the aborigines there. But they are disappearing by the day, which is a subtle game of the slave master, which we quoted at the beginning of this video. And of course, we ask you again, why do you think they are interested in where they were enslaved rather than the fact that they were enslaved at all? So that's why he keeps trying to separate those in the diaspora from those back in sub-Saharan Africa. The same way, if you were to look at Nigeria, for example, you will see that the slave master came with his slave hunting partners to divide the South. If you looked at the map on your screen, for example, you will see that the slave master just kept the North as one block because that area has been completely conquered by his slave hunting partners. Then, in the South, where they were coming for their slave raids, he has it divided into two, Western region and Eastern region while having one north. So if you notice, the conquest is coming further down. He divided this eastern region you see here into southeast and south-south. That's how they do the conquest. So if south-south and southeast tried to unite, he would descend with terror. The same way if the old eastern region tried to unite with the western region, he would do the same thing. That's how the divide and conquer works. You don't need to believe us, you just need to follow what they are doing. But going forward, it says, Of about 40,000 Negroes, therefore, who are annually dragged away from Africa in British ships, we learn from their carriers that not less than 2,400 perish during a voyage of six or eight weeks, in addition to which number must be taken, those lost by disease and accident during the stay of the ships on the coast, and those who die after their arrival in the islands of the sodas contracted on board. Our interest is for you to see how brutal it was. It is not something an individual could have done. It's impossible. And if you look at the army today, it will be very clear to you that an army in Nigeria claiming to be protecting supposedly Nigerians will wait for the British Parliament to condemn it for its actions against supposedly its own people. That's exactly how the slave trade happened. If you check the army, you'll see that the bulk of those people were trained in the UK. And then the poor ones are trained locally. And that training is mere conditioning where they just shoot people indiscriminately. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. And there is no better way to say it. We are sorry. And here again, we see Committee of the Society instituted in 1787 for the purpose of effecting the abolition of the slave trade. So now we ask you, why do you think people who consider themselves human will be there killing themselves and wait for somebody to come from Europe or America to come and tell them to stop? Ask yourself that question if you somehow believe that the Negroes are the same with the slave hunters of old. At least what they are doing today is enough proof of who and who were behind it. Why are they being discussed in the British Parliament, whereas there were no 
parliament in those countries at that time because they were still living their natural ways, their peaceful ways, existing peacefully until the slave hunters came to capture them and sell them as slaves. And further, it says the speech of Mr. Biafoy on Tuesday, June the 18th on a bill for regulating the conveyance of Negroes. Our interest is for you to see what the parliament was all about at that time and ask yourself how come the law for the capture or the enslavement of the Negroes is being made in the UK and here it says it presents this mortality even in vessels from the windward coast of Africa but in those of Boni, Benin and the Calabars. Now remember the slave ports were in Calabar, what you call Calabar in Nigeria today, in Boni and then in Badagri which was in the Bight of Benin. So our question to you is when they tell you these people are Igbo, these people are not, could they have been that they were capturing only one group and one group were selling themselves in thousands and they didn't finish? It was done by the army. The army was a slave hunting militia and at least their activities today prove it beyond any reasonable doubts and you notice that they provide cover to the jihadists, the Fulanese, when they come to take over a town, the army provides cover to them. If you doubt us, remember the video by Dan Juma. He was a, a retired military officer. So there is nothing you are going to tell him about what he was saying before he made that outcry. But unfortunately, the slave master coded it very well that they regret only after they have killed their siblings. If you remember, in the biblical code of Jesus Christ betrayed by Judas, Judas committed suicide after that. Why did he then betray him? You will see the same thing in the IPOP deputy. You will see how they will continue until they sabotage the struggle. Then they start the regret. The slave master understands that they don't regret until they succeed in sabotaging their brothers. And here again we see debates in the House of Commons relative to the abolition of the slave trade witnessed the 13th May 1789. So if we do a quick date check by referencing perpetual calendar and general reference manual by Goodcombs Jasper published 1894, here we see that 1789 calendar as you can see shows that May 13th is also a Wednesday and you can check this in any way you like. It's a little way to understand whether what we are reading was actually written at the time it claims to have been written. And to further show you the strong link between the slave master and his slave hunting partners, here is a little comment from Facebook. We removed the name because it's not necessary and remember this comment is coming from the slave hunters in a place like Nigeria, in the event you know what is going on there, they have been killing those in the south with the tacit support of the slave master as usual and they floated a so-called eastern security network. So based on that, they are now angry and if you remember the IPOB deputy that we told you had compromised because we don't understand how the slave master is able to do it but he infiltrates the negroes and then starts using one against the other we want you to see this comment first and compare it with what we we're just reading about the laws being made in the british parliament for the abolition of the slave trade as at 1789 remember this is like saying if they made the law there then they will get the foolish africans to develop human sense to stop selling themselves that's the same thing you see today. You see that the army went to the toll gate to kill people. Whether or not they succeeded is a different thing. You see that it's been debated in the British Parliament. But then they went and massacred innocent people. Many are still in jail in Obibo. Nobody's talking about that. Ask yourself why. That's all we need you to do. But then these people that cannot even report ordinary killing of your own people are bringing you vaccines. To keep you alive and you still can't see the treachery the slave master and his slave hunting partners and what they are doing but then this comment says we need un eu and icc to come to our rescue and arrest terrorist leader nam de kano and dissolve eastern security network and allow ucho ka for mefo and rafu was to continue their peaceful agitation of biafra remember they understand that the agitation is just noise making with the compromised individuals and remember the way they planned it they infiltrated IPOB this is our own conjecture 
But then, if you were to study the slave master, you will understand how he plays his game. They infiltrated, they got the deputy leader of IPOB, and they were using him as an enemy within. So they were planning everything with some principal officers, but obviously it didn't work out exactly as they planned. Apparently, they suspected or decoded, and that was why they floated the IPOB community radio. Now, if you compare what that deputy is saying today with what the guy from Turkey was saying, you will see how closely related. You will see how he was saying some things as if he knew IPOB better than everyone else. That's apparently at that time they had gotten an insider to be doing what they wanted done. Forget whatever you think. Remember we told you they will bring the guy from Turkey down to Nigeria and start using him. And that's exactly what they are doing. They understand the Negro. The Negro listens to what Masa is saying. So you can call a Negro to say somebody that is saving him, somebody that wishes him well, is now an enemy. All you need is to be persuasive enough. The way you see Den Kaloe doing it. Telling people that are adults, some of them are PhD holders that can read and write. And they believe him that they were in the land before Europeans came. They are even in the minority, so to say. But then, just note that every move the slave master and his slave hunting partners are making today is ways they are looking for to see how they can frustrate that Eastern Security Network. Remember, they need the Negroes not to be armed so that their slave hunting partners can be subjugating and enslaving them. We will show you what exactly they are playing at in a subsequent video. Let us also reference suggestions as to the spiritual philosophy of African slavery addressed to the members and friends of the Church of the New Jerusalem by WMH Holcomb, medical doctor, and this was published 1861. And here we are told that how long the institution is to last, what modifications it is to receive and how it is to disappear in the final and perfect order of things we cannot clearly foresee. Providence has permitted it so far for the good of all parties and has even made use of our very evils for its benefit. Selfishness brought the Negro from Africa. Selfishness reduced him to other and made him capable of uses. Selfishness feeds and clothes and protects him. If the Negro could not have been made subservient to our interests, we should long ago have turned him adrift, driven him before us and exterminated him as we have done the Indian. Remember, we told you, believe it or not, if you research this and you don't discover that Dane Calloway and the Aborigine narrative is sponsored by the slave master, put it in the comment section and we'll pull down the channel. Just research it. All we challenge you to do is conduct your research and tell us the outcome. And he goes further to say, such would be the issue of abolition. This is melancholy, but it is true. What we need now is not new conduct, but new motives. The natural man heads an oddly useful life from the hope of gain or power or reputation. The spiritual man leads the very same life from love to the Lord and the neighbor spiritualize the motives of the slaveholder and he becomes a regenerate man who while prudently caring for his own interests and for those about him is rendering the calculable service to the church and the world in view of the organic constitution of the negro of the facts and necessities of the case of the inexorable march of history and progress according to universal laws of divine providence not yet fully discovered and of the glorious ends to be attained, a slave holding a sin. How can a new churchman of enlarged views entertain the thought for a moment? And it goes further here to say, there is no need to recount the biblical argument for and against slavery. One party contends and with great force that the Bible recognizes its existence as one great means and agency of human development. And if it does not plainly sanction it, at least nowhere condemns it. The other side affirms that the spiritual principles of the Christian religion demand its overthrow. We who interpret the word spiritually 
ought to attain a high theological and philosophical standpoint whence to discover the genuine truth apart from all appearances of the matter or retrocination of the understanding. And further here we see that African slavery has converted more heathen to Christianity than all the missionary efforts of all the churches in all ages of the world combined. Now you see why they are behind the Aborigine narrative. Remember, if they can convince or deceive the whole world into believing that the Negroes were now Aborigines of the United States, then it would have washed them clean of the atrocities of the slave trade. That's ideally what they want to achieve. So that's why you see a sensible human being will be more interested in where the rape, for example, happened as against the fact that it happened at all. And it goes further here to say they will soon be all extinct. One of the strangest and most melancholy facts says Mr. Everett in human history. Now these people are not enslaved. Their sensual corporeal principle comes into contact with ours, but it is not subordinated to our scientific and rational faculties. They only learn our sensual vices and contract our diseases and perish. The same influx which flowing through the natural plane of the white man into the subordinated sensual corporeal of the negro makes him the longest lived and most prolific race in the world flowing into the disorderly sphere of the unsubdued Indian exterminates him. The same thing happens to negroes when they are released from the control of the white man and yet live within his powerful sphere. Free Negroes everywhere will ultimately die out in the presence of white civilization. The British Civilization Society will depopulate Africa instead of enlightening it. The safety of the Negro lies first of all in his wise and human subordination in some form to the white race. So now when you monitor the slave master and his slave hunting partners, mainly the British and the Fulanese in Nigeria, you will understand what all these are saying. All you need to do is to follow what they are doing. You see, the same person pulling out of the EU is the same one encouraging one Nigeria where his slave hunting partners can be used against the Negroes. Understand it. If you look at the Negro population in Europe, you see how it has disappeared over time. Again, it tells you here that they will depopulate Africa. And it tells you who will do it. So that's why you see that the COVID-19 could have started from China or whatever. But if you follow closely, you will see where they are acting on it more than anywhere else. That should tell you what the slave master is, a subtle beast. Let us also reference the constitution and finance of English, Scottish and Irish joint stock companies to 1720 by William Robert Scott, M.A. D. Phil, Lit D. Volume 1, The General Development of the Joint Stock System to 1720 and this was published 1912 and here we are told that the original African trade had depended on a very profitable exchange of English commodities against gold, ivory and spices. The voyages were made from England to Guinea and home again. Remember they have to change the name of the places from what they were to something else so that people cannot connect with their past. So that's why you see the aboriginal narrative. They are talking about how they are not from Africa. They keep telling you how they were Indians. Negroes and Indians are now the same. Like we told you, believe it or not, the aboriginal narrative is sponsored by the slave master. And the reason he's doing it is so that he can disconnect those in the diaspora with those in sub-Saharan Africa. So that when their slave hunting partners start massacring them, for example, they will not speak out. They will be saying, it's an internal affair. It doesn't concern us. Nigeria is a sovereign state and all those kind of garbage but they won't tell you that the weapons are also coming from them see an internal affair but they, it has to be settled with an external weapons it is their parliament that also determines whether or not the slave trade can be stopped or not but yet they will tell you it's an internal affair our interest is for you to see their game it's just unfortunate that the negroes are ignorant of what is happening you see some of them especially in West and Central Africa, granting interviews to the BBC, when the BBC is the biggest enemy of the Negro race, and it's the biggest weapon of the slave master. And he goes further to say, the adventurers had no dealings in slaves, 
but it is to be remembered that unlike the Russia company, they had no monopoly and therefore other Englishmen might touch at African ports. Accordingly, in 1562, John Hawkins seized 300 Negroes by force and shipped them to the Spanish plantations. Now we ask you, this story says they were seized by force, but you are told that their siblings were selling them. Why not ask yourself that simple question? How possible? It is the same thing you see today. You see the Nigerian state. Those people were the slave hunters. The army were the slave hunting militia. So that's why you see that somebody paying tax, doing everything in a country, will ask for his road or schools to be built. And the slave master will unleash his terror machinery, which is like the Nigerian army who were the slave hunters. So you see the launch of that Eastern Security Network. Watch the body language of the slave master, mainly the British, to understand what we're telling you. You don't need to believe us. Just research the history. You will see every step of the way, every move they want to make, every move they make, you will know why they are making it. And at least if you see how they stopped diaspora remittances in Nigeria to be paid and said it should be paid out in dollars, that's all they are doing to see how they can strangulate everything that has to do with the Biafra agitation. You don't need to believe us. But you just need to see it happen. But then you think your Senate or House of Rep has anything to do. No. You see how they went to the CBN? They used the lucky they have there to say, we now want everything you remit to be paid in dollars so that you can go sell the dollars with your people. Then if the money is not something they understand, they will say, oh, this person must be a Biafran. They can kill you and take your money. They are lawless. They use the law to enforce their servitude and enslavement of the Negro. And it goes further here to say this expedition was profitable and two others were undertaken in 1564 and 1567 but beyond the immediate profit to Hawkins and the adventurers who were in partnership with him in the first two voyages, the third was a failure. There were remote consequences both political and financial owing to the Spanish royal monopoly of the Negro trade in the West Indies. The cargoes of the ships could not be sold except under the guns of the fleet and it was only to be expected that collisions between the Spaniards and the English would occur. As affecting the existing adventurers, the expedition of Hawkins produced an impossible situation. The seizure of so many Negroes by force resulted in a panic on the African coast and the news spread with great rapidity. Hitherto, the English had been distinguished amongst Europeans by a comparatively fair treatment of the natives. Now, when an English ship appeared, instead of being welcomed, it was received with hostility and trade became exceedingly difficult. Moreover, at this period, each voyage was conducted against a time limit for so as to avoid the unhealthy season Every effort was made to return within 9 or 10 months. This left a short time for the actual trading, and when the natives were frightened, there was great delay. For these reasons, the last voyage mentioned, with which the adventurers can be connected, was in 1566 or whatever, and after the final expedition of Hawkins in the following year, there is no record of a regular African trade until 1588. Those are not our real interests. Our interest is for you to see that the people were against the slave trade. So there is no way a people could have been killing and capturing themselves. So now if you look at the Nigerian government, it is controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. Ask yourself why a country, two people, supposedly siblings, something will happen. Instead of debating and negotiating, you take guns and start killing the other people and tell us he's your brother. Ask yourself that simple question. You don't need to believe us. Common sense, that's all you need here. The army you see we are the slave hunters. That's why they are usually afraid of anyone raising anything called an army. Otherwise, if they were not planning to invade you, why are they afraid of you raising an army? For example, do you see countries that have no business there? Let's say Jamaica. Will Jamaica have any interest whether or not there is an army in Biafra or not? The answer would be no. If they have any interest, it will be so that the people can defend themselves. But unfortunately, the slave master and his slave hunting partners are still doing what they have been doing since whenever. And unfortunately, their ultimate goal is to exterminate the Negro race. For whatever reason, 
nobody knows what we did to them that's our little question to you it doesn't matter whether you believe us or not our question to you is ask yourself why in a place like nigeria they would rather go to war against a people that did nothing to them than sitting down to say this is what we don't like this is what we like let us also reference a tropical dependency an outline of the ancient history of the western sudan with an account of the modern settlement of northern nigeria by flora l shaw lady lugard and published 1905 and here we see what we meant by the favored slaves and the unfavored ones so that you understand what is going on remember the slave hunters like nigeria the way it is the slave master wants them to keep it that way and so here it tells us that the slaves of northern nigeria may be divided into two classes household slaves and farm slaves so that's what malcolm x called field negroes and house negroes and we shall put a video to show you exactly what he talked about and you can compare it with what we read here and he goes further to say the household slaves are domestic slaves in the sense usually understood though they frequently rise to positions of great responsibility and independence the status of farm slaves differs from that of household slaves and is rather that of serfs attached to the soil than of slaves in the common sense of the term they are inalienable from the land they cannot legally be sold they have certain rights as regards produce the houses they live in the land which they are allowed to cultivate for themselves and the time which is allotted to them for their own use our interest is for you to see the field slave and the house slaves which is exactly what you see in a place like nigeria today if you remember all that is creating confusion and chaos there is the negroes asking for equity and justice that's all remember the system is structured in such a way that the negroes are slaves to the slave hunters of old which is exactly what is creating all the problem they may not know unless it is broken down so that you too can understand it and so we want you to listen to malcolm x here to understand the technique being used so that's why you see that they could infiltrate something like ipob asking for freedom and get some people to start sabotaging the struggle remember the negro is a born slave and so those they use to sabotage the struggle forget that their own children will grow up and still be at the mercy of these slave hunters of old and therein lies all the problem which is a part they do not see and please note that in all honesty we do not understand how they are able to pull off that in such a way that they could buy over anyone perhaps they make them an offer that they can refuse but if you see the tenacity if you see how these people fight very hard to sabotage their siblings you will understand what we're saying you will see somebody who was deputy leader in ipob they got him over and he is now saying oh no he wants to unite everyone that had been in the struggle there were people that were being marginalized the same story that the slave hunters were saying is now what he's saying for those who understand what we're talking about if you were to listen to jelly when he was talking about how this is a business radio biafra is used to make money then you compare it with what that deputy that claimed to have left the struggle is now saying today that should tell you exactly what we're talking about then again you see that the negro is a real born slave when you look at comments like this he says lesson one a young lady dj switch takes nigeria government to icc under two months without cursing out anybody knowledge is power not cursing now if you look at this it might make a little sense to you but this is coming from a old refugee in the united states who was part of the struggle for biafra freedom but then somehow they were bought over so he's now sabotaging the struggle so he is trying to suggest here that the leader of the struggle causes people which is a, a game a gimmick of the slave hunters of old they have been using it trying to demonize the guy if you looked at what malcolm said here about the people and how they handle those that agitate remember we asked you why does the slave master never mention malcolm always telling you about martin luther king because he wants you to turn the other cheek so the man that made this comment is even older than this person that is leading the struggle he has never achieved anything himself 
in, as part of the struggle, he hasn't gotten the freedom, but he's now celebrating a, a lady he claims has taken Nigeria to ICC. So he's now interested in taking Nigeria to ICC, no longer the freedom. And he's not talking about cousin because he's now speaking what Massa asked him to say. He is now a house slave. He has been favored by the slave hunters of old. So that's the money that changed hands that turned them against the struggle. That's how the Negro is. But we shall look at that in a subsequent video. Our interest is for you to listen to Malcolm X here to understand exactly how the slave trade is structured in such a way that those you see against that freedom, if you check it, you will see that they are just house slaves. They are benefiting from the bad system. They have no sympathy for all those suffering. That's what you see. And for the likes of Ijele Speaks, popularly called Ujele, if you remember when one of the users here, Bestless Casual Gamer, was always talking about him, you see how the BBC, which is the biggest weapon of the slave master against the freedom of the Afro and Ambazonia, went to interview him and they arranged to bring him back to Nigeria to use him against IPOB. All they are trying to do is, if they can demonize Tano, the leader of the movement, then the people will stop paying their dues. Remember they started the story with how they were eating money. They were making money. The thing was just a business. It was a franchise. How the Dio Biafra was registered as a business. Remember, when they say that you in the diaspora will understand that you may need to register any business either as a charity or an organization or something before you can operate in the developed world. But then, these people leverage on it and the literacy back home to tell them that these people are not asking for your own good. It is for them to make money. That's why they have the radio. Now ask them, okay, how do people make money from radio when there is no adverts? They can't explain. So that's where you see the game going on. We shall look at it in a subsequent video. So our interest is for you to see how the Negro is, a born slave. And for you to see how the slave master leverages on that attribute of the Negro to enslave the Negro. So you see somebody who was part of a struggle. He has been in it for years. Perhaps they paid him or made him an offer he can't refuse. And he's making this type of tweet. As if going to the ICC is something he too couldn't have achieved. Remember he's a man waiting for another man to free him unashamedly. They have no shame. But like we told you. When they convince them, we don't know how they do it. There is nothing you will tell him now that will make him at least backtrack, go back to the struggle, or at least let the struggle be. All he will be working on now is to sabotage the struggle as much as he can. If you give him an opportunity to get them to kill all those in the struggle, he will kill them. But he will regret afterwards because all those who had been in this same business, they were killed by the slave hunters after they were used. Almost all of them were killed, but they wouldn't learn. So the slave master will go and write that the Negroes never learn without telling the whole story. So, and so please take note of this quote from Malcolm X that says, Whenever a black man cares for his people, empowering them and preaching truth, they will always focus on his mistakes, his flaws and his contradictions. They want to illegitimize his message, stop his progress and the hope for the people. That's exactly what the slave hunters are trying to do with this deputy that resigned and the likes of this man that made this tweet or this comment who was a coordinator in the movement before now. Remember, they had tried to jam Radio Biafra, it didn't work. They had tried to close down Radio Biafra, it didn't work. So now their interest is if they can demonize Kano, make people to hate him, they try to say it was to make money. That didn't work. That's why they brought all these people to start saying Kano is a liar, Kano is a this. They forget that people's eyes have opened. You can analyze things and know who is lying and who is saying the truth. But like we told you, the slave master and his slave hunting partner still believe that the Negroes are gullible. They believe whatever Massa is saying. But that is different in the present scenario. And to better understand what we're saying, an adult like this man that made this comment does not ask himself why nobody is talking about the killings in Obibo. All he's talking about is the ICC, that the case can be made to drag for two years, three years, four years, and nothing will come out of it because the slave master is behind all that is happening. He has no knowledge of that. 
but the leader of that freedom movement has this knowledge and therein lies the problem because he thinks that the slave master will ever work in his favor against his slave hunting partners so that's why he put it as he is cursing people ask him what and what is the cause he put on people nobody will tell you but the same people were there when the nigerian army which was a slave hunting militia declared ipob a terrorist group for doing nothing why celebrating their own people that murdered thousands boko haram they don't kill them they just bring them dress them on some clothes and tell us that they have repented they control the repentance ask this person making this comment how many fulanis are in the prisons in nigeria he can't answer just because they have given him a little money from public funds and so please listen to malcolm x here to understand the favored slave and the unfavored one malcolm calls them the house slave and field slave or house negroes and field negroes so our interest is for you to listen to it closely and you'll see what they want to achieve with this deputy that resigned and these other coordinators that have sold out so you understand what they are trying to do remember malcolm is saying when he talks to the slaves they don't kill him they send an old house negro behind him to go and undo what they were told so their duty is to undo whatever they believe kano has told the people which is the truth their duty is to undo it so that's why somebody will be telling you how somebody has sent others to icc forgetting that they have been in that suffering for a very long time the icc has not done anything and they will not do anything because if you understand the history that's the same way you saw the slave trade last for 400 years and nobody did anything they just go to their parliament discuss and come back listen to malcolm x first back during slavery when black people like me talk to the slaves they didn't kill them they sent some old house negro along behind him to undo what he said you have to read the history of slavery to understand this. There were two kinds of Negroes. There was that old house Negro and the field Negro. And the house Negro always looked out for his master. When the field Negroes got too much out of line, he held them back in check. He put them back on the plantation. The house Negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes. And he could talk just like his master, master, good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss, we sick? When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught a fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. This was the difference between the two. And today you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. Yeah. I'm a field Negro. And now that you have listened to Malcolm X and you now understand certainly what the slave master and his slave hunting partners are trying to do with those that just sold out from the struggle of IPOB, we want you to understand their game. It's not sophisticated. The slave master is never smart. He just leverages on the lack of humanity and common sense among his slave hunting partners. That's all. He is never smart. So they infiltrated the IPOB and sold this dummy to them. Ask yourself, how can somebody who is genuinely looking for freedom now buy into a narrative of how Kano is a liar? And then that is it. That means he wasn't looking for freedom in the first place. Remember, Kano once said, if I asked for freedom or cry or something along those lines if i cried for freedom and you gave me bread and i kept quiet it means it's not freedom that i was looking for in the first place and so just in the event you don't understand where they are going all they are trying to do is they want to use that resigned deputy use their media the 
the BBC. That's all they are going to do. Use their media and propaganda to sell the dummy of that deputy as the best guy. Remember the same way they presented Martin Luther King Jr. instead of Malcolm. They never talk about Malcolm. That's what they want to do. They want that one that will be telling you that it's okay to remain a slave. You see, God put us together. We are one and all those kind of little things. Something akin to what this person that asked this question is talking about. That's exactly what they want to use him for. Watch and see. You see the BBC jumping all over the place, interviewing people, doing as if they are in your favor. Ask yourself, how many documentaries has the BBC done to show the injustices being done to the people before you grant them that interview? It was the same BBC that told the world that the people were starving because of famine and still our people refused to learn that's what they want to do so they want to present this guy as the face of the struggle that's all they're trying to do if you notice he has gone to side with wasriki who was preaching one nigeria few months ago and before we round up let us reference the church missionary intelligence and record a monthly journal of missionary information volume 15 new series and this was published 1890 and here we are told that the principal rallying point is the Sultan of Segu Sikoro, the capital of Bambara, on the upper Niger, but it is rather due to the restless fighting propensities of the race than to the ambition of one great conqueror that we find Fulani colonies scattered through the whole central Sudan and holding the reins of power in distant Adamawa. Wherever they have gone, their name is so identified with jihads or holy wars against the pagans that one hears the word Fulani applied to marauding bands, not one member of which can speak the Fulani language. Midway between these two fierce races of crusading herdsmen, Arabs and Fulas, pressing in from east and west, we have the large and well consolidated nation of the Hausas lying between the Niger and Lake Chad. But our interest is for you to see that wherever they go, they are identified with jihad. That is who these uh, sellouts were calling to come and invest in their land. Not knowing that these are conquerors, they are coming to take over the land. If you notice, the city mentioned above where it says they are from Dando, which we shall see shortly in a map. But just going further down, you see where it tells us that the simple earnest Mohammedan missionary of whom we were told so often a short time ago does not seem to have reached these regions as yet so Islam is being fast spread by two other methods first among the village agriculturists to the south against whom large bands of ferocious ruffians go out annually the only device by which the wretched pagans can escape with their lives for of course their goods are plundered is to prostrate themselves once or twice daily muttering Allah Akoba and thereby constitute themselves good Muslims. Remember the whole thing is jihad. The reason you see the Muslims coming down south now with the Fulanese and all that is pure jihad with the slave master sponsoring them. We will show you where these are documented. You don't need to believe us. But he goes further to say, secondly, among the hidden traders, this partly Christian system, as Canon Taylor called it, is spreading by less violent means. When they go to Bida or any other large city on trading expeditions, if they come as heathen, they are treated with contempt and not even allowed to eat with Muslims. So to get fair treatment, they too become converts, in quotes by the same simple process, such being the methods by which the devastating religion has been spread. It is hardly to be wondered at that religious fanaticism seems little known except among the Fulani invaders. An extremely graphic and truthful story of life in the central Sudan is given in the very fascinating book, The History of a Slave by H. H. Johnston full of admirable illustrations calculated to leave a vivid impression but these are not our interests you notice where we read about the western sudan from whence they come 
by which we may understand the countries lying west of the kingdom of Gando on the Niger does not contain many very centralized governments. So on the map, you see the Gando just beneath or around Sokoto. All these places have been destroyed today by the slave hunters. The slave master controls the map. So all he does is they plan what they want to do, they do it and he will redraw the map. So that's why self-determination is something they come against with brutal force. So like we told you, all you need to do is keep your eyes on the British and the Fulanese in Nigeria. You will understand everything you need to know about the COVID. So if they started massacring people in Biafra or in Ambazonia, as they are doing correctly in Ambazonia, you will understand where the issue is coming from. It is from the slave trade. They are on a conquest march. That's what they are trying to do. But like we told you, those sellouts do not understand. You see, when they are slaves, but they do not know the history, they don't understand where they are. And that's where the problem lies. And before we round up for better understanding of the area, let us reference a short history of Nigeria by Michael Crowder. And here we we'll see a map of the tribes and ethnicities. So you see where it says Hausa, Kanuri, Bede, Beriberi, Manga, Dejoma, and all that. Most of them have been wiped off. Like we always say, we don't know exactly if these other groups in the north were also Negroes. But then, what we know very well is that the Negroes were pushed down from Negro land to the southern part of what we have today. For example, if you look at the map on your screen, you will see where it says Abo. Abo used to be the capital of what they called Igbo before. But they have moved, pushed it further down. And like we told you, the slave master working with his slave hunting partners have changed the narrative to how Igbo is now what you see here. If you look at this map, it was drawn before the war even in the 60s. You will see how this same map represents what they call geopolitical zones today. So they just rebrand and remodel what they are writing. You will think they are making sense, but they are actually deceiving the people because the conquest is ongoing. So you see, the same way they called this Igbo, they call it Southeast today. Once around, they call South South. And then you see the side they call Yoruba and all that, they now call South West. So if you looked at the big picture, you will see places where they wrote F, F, F and put the key as F is Fulani. So you see the Northeast and Northwest that control the power block today. Those were the slave hunting partners. They are coming down south. That's why you see all the killings in the middle belt. And please always remember to wonder why the slave master does not report the killings by his slave hunting partners. We give you a little example again. If you look at the imposter that is supposedly the Nigerian president today, if you imagined if it was Jonathan that has been rumored to be dead, people like the BBC, Al Jazeera, VOA, will be in front of that ass or rock, waiting for that person to come out and tell them who they are. But like we told you, believe it or not, the slave master and his slave hunting partners are behind every problem we are having there. And until that is identified and solved, there is no progress that can be made. Before and before we round up, just so you understand that the slave trade predates any other recorded history, from the book we cited earlier, you see where it says, From time immemorial, the slave trade of the ancient world had its markets of supply in the Sudan. The earliest Greek historians speak of slaves captured by the native tribes of North Africa, and the monuments of Persia and Ethiopia show that the enslavement of the Negro was a custom more ancient than any written record. So all you need to do to understand that the South are still slaves to the North is to look at the slave master and his slave hunting partners and how they are going to handle or how they handle Biafra and Ambazonia agitations. Remember, like we told you, believe it or not, they are food soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. If you saw during the lockdown, you see that while everybody was locked down, whether they were building the pipelines that were going to supply crude elsewhere or not, they saw people, mass movement of people coming into the south. Those people were coming to line as enemies within until they pressed the button for the conquest or massacre to commence. But like we told you, their foot soldiers are those they buy over. You notice that some so-called freedom fighters 
do not condemn those things happening because they have been compromised. You will never see them comment on those things or condemn them. That's the same way you notice that the deputy that has left is now speaking like Ijele speaks, talking about how whether or not it's Buhari that is there will not get them Biafra. Remember, the reason they are telling you that is because they believe that the Negro is gullible. Ask yourself how you can vote for A and somebody else will come and put B there and tell you that it doesn't matter who is there. Ask yourself that question and why they are saying it. But in any case, here we come to the end of this edition of the Negro and the Law, a reply, part 7. We thank you very much for listening and we encourage you to find time to look for these materials and study them in detail yourself. This will help you understand who the slave master is and who is working with and how the slave trade happened. And above all, if Biafra or Ambazonia gets freedom, it will be the first time in recorded memory that the Negroes will be free anywhere. And it will also help you understand which side to take, which positions to take, and which things or stories to believe. Because the slave master is a subtle beast. So when he starts telling you that no, they are brothers, it's Nigerians killing themselves, you understand that he has an interest. There is somebody he is giving the weapons to. When it's time to supply his weapons, it's no longer an internal matter. But when it's time for him to at least broker peace, he will pretend not to see or he will misrepresent everything. Like we told you, everyone must be aware of the BBC. That is the biggest weapon of terror of the slave master. You don't need to believe us. You just need to follow what they are doing and apply basic common sense to the lies they tell you. We thank you very much once again for listening. Peace.